If you count even the smallest things as visual effects, you're almost hitting every shot in the movie. The entire world's about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. I don't know what this is going to end up being, but I feel like it's probably going to be over 2,000 visual effects shots. You have all these big visual effects, and you have to rely on a lot of people's knowledge to figure out where you're shooting. Peter, Peter, Peter. We weren't able to get assets for a lot of the digital characters from the Raimi and Webb films. So those we had to kind of get going from scratch. You know I can give you a real makeover. However, there's some practical things that we had access to, for example, Doc Ock's arms and things like that that we rescanned. It's like a bunch of repeating joints. And then digitally, we tend to create additional substructure and mechanisms for how it works to make it cooler and more complicated, but still living and true to the original as much as possible. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Nothing will stand in our way. Nothing! Would you look at that? For Sandman, he's going to always be 100% digital. I've had a lot of really interesting discussions about how they move. If you're made out of sand, and would you think it's the most practical, efficient way to get from across the living room floor to make yourself into a human shape and walk, or would you just sort of blow over there? In my mind, he's always shifting, and then if there's a moment of dialogue, he'll sort of coalesce and have that moment of dialogue. What do you mean you're not my Peter? What the hell is going on? and then kind of go back into shifting again. How you like the new new? With Electro, we're playing with him as pure energy, and he can be quite large, he can be small, he can be anything he wants, and we're playing with it similar to electricity in that there's small electrical feelers that go out, and then he can jump. But what's really interesting is that he can get into some action poses and get into fights and power moves. He doesn't have to obey his own physical space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Nice knowing you, Spider-Man. One of the bigger challenges, because it's so important, is finding that language of the magic. It's not just arbitrary magic. It needs to tell you something is happening. When we had Doctor Strange in the Sanctum Chamber, we had some interactive light. We know that these little pieces of magic are luminous, so they're lighting up the world and Peter Parker. And he's sort of doing his hand gestures and he's channeling his energy and basically writing a spell of magic around the room. And so the interactive lights that we have on set get increasingly chaotic. And then we'd do some concept images of, OK, what could that be? And then I would show that to John, and they gave me a few different variations of it. I always think the best visual effects have a lot of practical special effects as well. It's always going to look better. When you can mix the two, those are always how you're going to get your best-looking movies. I was fascinated at this void that I saw between traditional production and visual effects, and I really wanted to be a designer that could kind of bridge the gap between those two things. We always fight to build or to have as much represented in front of the camera as we can. So even if it's a small amount of a surface, at least they understand how light's hitting it, how, how it's interacting, how the bounce is happening, how the colors are. There's so much information. If you can capture it while you're capturing other elements, it's just going to make your life that much easier to try and make it as real as possible. And that translates not only for visual effects, but for the performance. I mean, as soon as an actor has something that they can interact with, it just grounds them. And sometimes they're not even real elements. Sometimes they're just proxies. But if the shape is there, you know, it gets you 50% of the way there. If the color is roughly there, it helps. So we strive as much as we can to get as much in camera as possible. It's an ancient relic, the Machina de Cadavis. We've got a prop called the box. It's the one prop that runs through this film. And it's kind of a game of hot potato. Everybody's got to get their hands on this box. Don't. It's an ever-changing, evolving prop. Our prop on the set is green. 
because it is ever-changing and it becomes a CG prop. It's a great example of how can we physically help the actors with their spatial relationships in a prop, passing it back and forth, throwing it. So we've got to a place of where this is what it should be in our physical world. We're gonna constantly develop it in our CG world. It's a tricky thing to be designed because it's meant to be an ancient artifact. We're still figuring out what it looks like and how it behaves. But right now, everyone's carrying around this wooden painted green box with orange tracking dots on it. With visual effects, you can turn almost anything into almost anything. There's some limitations there, but we're finding that with some creativity, you can shoot almost anything. Our final set, the Statue of Liberty, it's an erector set of scaffolding. It's so much as visual effects, and we're only building small pieces of the actual Statue of Liberty. What we have behind me is a couple steps, some stairways, some rubble, and the rest of it's digital of Liberty Island, Statue of Liberty. We had a little bit of scaffolding set piece that obviously will get extended digitally. A lot of the characters will be digital. Effects, meaning falling debris and all sorts of things like that. Electrical effects, sand effects, like you name it. So there's, there's a ton of effects, not only in that sequence, but all throughout. The island itself will be extended digitally. Because it's an island, you've got the water in between, which will be digital as well. But then the deep background, like the cityscape, we had a location team that did helicopter plates at night and morning because the scene kind of happens from night into sunrise, then we'll have to make adjustments to that. But we'll start with some deep photographic background. I have a hard time imagining a single shot in that last end battle scene that won't have some digital component to it. Hey, hey. I think this is it. I think you're about to go home. You plan, but you also plan to have everything change from under you. <laughs> so I think that's weirdly part of the plan. At the end of the day, it's always about story and, and making it the best story as possibly it can be. And if that requires like completely changing out a, an environment or a costume at the last minute, we have to be prepared to do that. 